Lab Guy here. Today I'd like to announce that the new deflection yoke is finished. I'll show you a little of the final winding work on this. I want you to know that there was about five hours of labor in wrapping the wire on here. I then uh, bonded some uh, insulated wires for connecting the coils. Each axis coil has the wires coming out 180 degrees to each other and then the alternate coil is at 90 degrees to those. So I made one axis orange and yellow wires and the other one brown and red for, uh, for the color code of 1, 2, 3, and 4 to match our CRT's number. So Without further ado, uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes of me winding the coil. Ooh, that's exciting stuff. And then uh, a quick, short demonstration of the coil actually working. This project was successful within its limitations. I want to make it clear that this deflection yoke was never intended to be a Oh, what would you call it? Uh, a functional long-term device. I just wanted to see how well it would work or if it would even work. Good news, it works. So uh, here's some uh, video of the construction process finalizing and then a demonstration of the uh, deflection yoke in operation. We're ready to start winding the final quarter of the wrap on this experimental deflection yoke. And on the first two sets of turns, I was using some old wire that I bought at a flea market, which measured with the micrometers, measured out to be 26 gauge wire, American wire gauge. So I purchased a roll of 26 AWG, 26 gauge wire, of a different color just so we could differentiate the two kinds of wire to recognize the two separate coils. But on doing this third winding, I discovered that I had significantly more wire left on my on my spindle on the bobbin than the first time around. So wrapping this second set of windings, the called the first winding, the X winding, and wrapping the Y winding, I ended up using about 45 feet of wire for the first set of windings each half and in this case I used 35 feet of wire. I don't know why. This is not a significantly major issue um, electronically speaking but the two sets of windings will be driven at slightly different currents to get a given a number of inches of deflection on the tube. Not a showstopper. Remember, this is an experimental yoke. This is not meant to be a practical put into service type of yoke unless of course that I can make it a practical yoke that I can put into service. But at this point this is a grand experiment and uh, we'll treat it as such. If it works out in the long run uh, maybe I'll make some more, maybe I'll find a, a smaller core uh, for these tubes because this one's a, a bit large. Now if I was doing a larger CRT this might be okay but then I, it would need to be driven at even higher current and driving the yoke at high speed and high current gets to be problematic. You need a very powerful driving amplifier. So for the experiment, this is as small as I could make it. Uh, this was the smallest core that I could find in a large size 
um, that would fit over the neck of the tube. Um, I didn't find anything in between uh, the smaller cores and then this size. This is a power transformer core. So that's where it sits right now and I'm preparing to wind the final turn on here for the second axis. So let's get on with that. Alright, we'll reload the spindle with a fresh load. This time I'm going to only put 40 feet of wire on here instead of 50. Try not to use up so much wire. Or, I mean, waste so much wire. And it's only a, a few grams of copper in the end. I guess. Alright, this is, this is how I do this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, 37, 38, 39, and 40. 40 feet. Alrighty then. Let's get started, shall we? Congratulations, Mrs. Lab Guy. It's a coil. Alright, I've bonded four wires to the new uh, experimental deflection yoke. So, uh, I suppose the next thing you guys will see is the test setup. Okay, the new experimental deflection yoke is placed on the cathode ray tube. The setup has been restored and we are going to see how it works. So let's take a closer look at the face of the tube. We're operating with the first anode of the tube at 150 volts and the second anode at 4 kilovolts. I currently have the uh, G1 voltage at minus 50 volts cutting off the beam. 
the two signal generators are driving triangle waves into the two axes of the yoke and much to my surprise and delight it works. Now we're not getting much deflection at this uh, level because the uh, generators can only put out plus and minus 200 milliamps of current and the signals not centered for whatever reason uh, because the deflection yoke is not centered it's offset slightly by just the way this is sitting on the table so um, by sliding the yoke back I can make the waveform a little bit bigger by deflecting the beam earlier in the neck of the tube at any rate you can see that we have X and Y deflection there's Y let's get it kind of squared up the thing doesn't want to stay put and um, let me see if I can block it with something so it doesn't roll there we go there's vertical there's horizontal and together they're running at about 1 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz triangle waves and I can uh, of course vary the, the relative frequencies of those so this project is a complete success if we switch to sine waves and make them the same frequency we should be able to produce a circle more or less so the uh, experimental deflection yoke works I encourage you to uh, get a ferrite ring and a CRT that this ring will fit on and wind one of these for yourself and if you need uh, detailed instructions feel free to contact me the contact information is on my website labguysworld.com ah, I'm trying to get this centered up for you <laughs> So you can see it better. So there we go. You can see the deflection coil back here. And uh, you can see that we have both X and Y deflection. And the square looking wave shape there is square and straight. Our scanning lines are straight at least as far as we can scan at the moment and uh, I would say that the experimental XY deflection yoke project has been a resounding success. Maybe later I'll build some amplifiers to drive it but at the current time I want to return to the NBTV dissector cam so as you can see the cathode ray tube is operating this is our M1234P31 CRT which is designed for aircraft cockpits and it has that beautiful uh, blue green phosphor uh, with medium persistence and uh, makes an excellent testing tube for all kinds of projects so I hope you've enjoyed this part of the cathode ray tube series and now I'll have to think of something else. Feel free to comment. We'll let the viewers drive some of these projects and see where they go. I hope you found that demonstration enjoyable. I hope you found the construction process educational and uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all of my videos. Greetings to all of the new subscribers. You guys keep trickling in and I appreciate that very much. And greetings to all of the current and long-term subscribers. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, thank you for watching the videos. You make it worth my time to uh, 
go to all of this labor to produce the various demonstrations that I can give to you people. Um, I appreciate uh, your viewership as much as I enjoy the technology. I want to keep this knowledge alive as I've mentioned before. None of us lives forever. There's a lot of useful and useless information in here. I'll simply throw it all out on the table and you guys can pick through it for what you find useful, amusing, or uh, however you find usefulness in it. So until next time, Lab Guy out. Congratulations, Mrs. Lab Guy. It's a coil.